Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of Gammon. So today we've got a very short video, shorter than my usual, but I just decided to make a little video on how I've been spraying bonnets lately. So as it turns out, I was actually up at a restoration workshop called Exclusive FX. It's here in Perth, Western Australia. They do some really good work by the way. But I was having a chat to the owner over there and he was saying, just talk tech talk, you know, and he was saying how you should always spray from the middle out on both coats, which is what you see me doing here. So yeah, start from the middle and work your way out because his reasoning was that it's easier to see the paint going on when you're working towards yourself, at least on flat panels like roofs, bonnets and boots. I guess that's partly to do with the lighting in the spray booth, but I thought, you know what, it's not going to take that much to give it a try. So I did give it a try and he was absolutely right. It is a little bit easier to see the paint go on. It's one of those things that, like I had someone mention on my Instagram page, because I did like do a quick post about this on my Instagram page, and someone said, oh, you know what, like I've always done it that way. And he spun out when he saw me do it from side to side. Now, my reasoning from doing it side to side was for the uh, wet edge, I guess. If you go from the middle to the outside, I guess it would probably be more important on like a hot day and a larger bonnet, but I could sort of foresee that um, it might have started to sort of flash off a little bit and then you would have a little bit of a dry spray edge where you do go and meet up because it might be, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute from the time that you sprayed that center patch by the time you get around to the center on the other side. So yeah, I mean, look, I'd never really had anyone tell me to do that before and I thought, you know what, that's actually a pretty damn good idea. So I thought, in theory, it's gonna work. So the next time I went to work, I tried it and I liked it. So the next time after that, I decided I may as well make a quick YouTube video on it and here we are now. So on the topic of where to start and stop, what I've found best practice is, or the best way for me to do it anyway, uh, this is with clear coat, I've found, and, and actually base coat too, and actually wet on wet primer. So yes, I've found that you are best off starting on the outside and then do the inside last. So I always used to do that around the other way as well, but there's some good reasoning behind it is that like your overspray from the inside will land on a wet outside and it will melt in rather than landing on a dry outside. And then especially on the hot days, uh, that misty overspray will turn into somewhat of a sand pit and then when you go to spray over it there's like all these little yeah nibs and little bits of um, dried paint underneath what you're trying to get a nice wet coat over. Another thing is look with this bonnet here like this is a brand new bonnet but one thing I've found lately especially with the standox wet on wet primer I don't remember it being too bad with the glazer it wet on wet but the standox wet on wet primer I've got some issues with it not laying down really nicely and whenever I do a new bonnet, like I've found pretty much any other panel is pretty right, like side panels and uh, bumpers and all that stuff I've found I'm pretty right with it, but whenever I use wet on wet on a brand new bonnet, it always pinches back and it sort of dies in the ass and it leaves me with a finish I'm not that happy with. So when this job came down on the Friday, I saw that new bonnet and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to throw a couple of coats of two-pack primer over it, sandable primer. And yeah, look, the results are much better than if I had a wet on wet editor. Yeah, I've pretty much always had some issues with the standox wet on wet. I've never been a big fan of it. It's one of the first things I do remember noticing coming from Glazerit to standox is that like the Glazerit wet on wet, it went down like clear. So it went down really nice and smooth and glassy like a coat of clear. Whereas the standox stuff just goes down with a little bit more peel in it a bit chunkier and I've found whenever I do go to use it especially on the bonnets you're fighting that orange peel when you're clearing it up and then it always ends up looking worse and worse over time look if you've got any tips uh, or tricks on that standox wet on wet on larger panels like bonnets or something be sure to let me know but I, I do actually remember it not being as bad when I was using the more premium clears now the clear coat that I'm using here is standox standard clear so it's there entry level clear coat it's like the cheapest standox branded clear coat so look it's a great quality clear i really do like it but it's not the full hs or the voc clear coat but all that aside as i said before it is just a short video and i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and also i'd like to let everyone know that we've finally 
got more spray suits in stock. I'll leave a link in the description and pin a comment to the comment section for where you can go and get yourself one of those spray suits. I actually had them do a couple of alterations for the Gunman Edition spray suit. So previously they never had access holes to your own pockets. Now I had them cut some access holes in the sides, I also had them put a top pocket in there and they're lightweight, they're washable, they last for quite some time. So yeah, definitely hot merchandise and get on them. We've finally got them back in stock after some massive COVID related delays. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.